Hi, this is Jimmy the Fontmeister, and welcome to the quick start guide about importing metrics in Fontographer. Now, the metrics of a font are things like the spacing between characters, the width of the characters, the kerning and the ascent and descent, or the lowest and highest points of the font. By the way, the ascender and descender control the letting or the spacing between sentences. Now many photographer users will open an existing font and then do something to it and then they regenerate the font and then they wonder why the metrics don't look the way they used to. The reason is is that they forgot to import the metrics from the original font. Now let's take a look at what happens on the file import metrics menu. You see here we have these three types of metric files. MET, which is a photographer database file for metrics, a text file where you can view all those numbers if you're interested. The PFM stands for printer font metrics. That is a file that travels with a PFB outline file for a type 1 font on the PC. An AFM file stands for Adobe font metrics. And that's also a text file that shows you the metrics. While we're at it here, I should mention that uh, in addition to MET, PFM, and AFM files, you can import metrics from a true type font. The, uh, the actual true type font contains the metrics inside of it. And also, uh, in some cases, you will import the metrics on a, from a Mac uh, screen font suitcase. For more details on font formats, be sure to take a look at our uh, video on photographer and font formats. Okay, so always make it a habit every time you open a font to go to file import metrics and make sure you import any metrics that are available. Now I'm going to suggest you first use kerning and spacing. You'll have to come back after you've imported the kerning and spacing and import the ascent and descent separately. So let's take a look at what this looks like in real life, okay? What we've got here is a character that has very tight spacing. Notice this. This dotted line is called the right-hand side bearing. Another term that is used for that is the advanced cursor width, which means that as soon as you type the letter A, the cursor will come to rest right here where this dotted line is. That would mean the B would be right up against the A. So that's not very good uh, spacing between letters. So, um, Let's see what happens if we realize this, that uh, I've, I didn't think about what I was doing and why is the spacing all messed up. And let's go ahead and import the metrics and repair the damage, okay? Here we go. Now you see that the right-hand side bearing is better. I mean, you may want to adjust it, but at least there's some space between characters. Now you also need to check your metrics by going to the uh, window menu, open metrics window, and test your spacing and kerning. This is how we know things are wrong. Okay, now that we've repaired the damage, things look pretty good. Now what about for kerning? What happens if we look at a uh, kerning pair and it's obvious that something's wrong? Okay, again, that's an immediate red flag for us to go to File, Import, Kerning and Spacing, and, and voila, the kerning pair has been repaired. Now you can see that the width is fixed and the kerning is there. And so we've all learned a valuable lesson to always import the metrics every time we open a font. Now if you want more details on uh, the intricacies of the metrics of a font, refer to your user manual. And thank you for watching the Photographer Tutorial Series.